don't mind. I'm just going to go first on this because yeah. this is a topic I'm very passionate about. And I think Baker Mayfield's contract is going to be the decision on how the league's outlook on quarterbacks change. Because I think COVID has kind of created a situation where teams are starting to realize with the cap, we can't be paying these average quarterbacks $30 million, $35 million, top of the market money, and then hoping three years into the contract, they're all of a sudden the 15th highest paid quarterback in the NFL. And all and you can continue to build a team around them that way. I think that was what the Eagles felt with Carson Wentz, but Carson Wentz was better. I think he was like probably a top 10 quarterback at the time they paid him or somewhere around there. He had moments of showing it. And that's how the Rams, I think, felt about Jared Goff. But COVID and the cap going down so much has totally changed that. And I think the landscape of the league should be, because they have it with every position, that quarterbacks shouldn't be overpaid an X percentage of the cap unless they truly deserve it. Like the top of the line guys, which to me, only five players in the NFL, without a doubt, I would pay whatever money they want. And that's Josh Allen, Russell Wilson, obviously Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, and Deshaun Watson. Those five guys from marketability, sustainability, size, arm talent, everything. I think all th those five guys, if they want $40 million, pay it. Everybody else falls kind of in between pay them like a backup case Keenum 10 million and pay them like a start, a superstar, Deshaun well, Watson 40 million. Right. right. You got to fit them somewhere in. And I think the Baker Mayfield deal makes that decision. Cause to me, Baker Mayfield, like I said, is 14 to 18 really good player within their system when they have the right pieces around him. So I think if if the Browns make the right decision with Baker Mayfield and don't pay him top of the market $40 million and instead pay him somewhere like $25 million, like what Tom Brady made this year, I think, one, the Browns will have sustained success with Baker Mayfield. Two, I think Baker Mayfield himself will have, three, will have sustained success. And three, I think it'll totally reset the market on how quarterbacks are looked at. Cause I think the, I think Baker Mayfield would then set the example for what guys closer to his skill level would get paid. And then of course, when Justin Herbert gets up, he would get paid the $40 million. But when uh, maybe a guy like Tua, if he plays five years and he plays similarly to how he played as a rookie, but with improvement, he would get paid closer to what Baker gets paid though. I think Baker's more gifted than Tua. Yeah, I'm with you. And that's the thing with COVID too, is the salary goes down. So teams are kind of really making, having to make these tough decisions on salary cuts and like penny pinching to make sure like they're actually getting the most value out of their players. Like they can't just keep spending more than what they're actually worth because they know the cap's going to go up and it's going to be good in a few years. Like they can't do that this upcoming year. And with Goff and Wentz getting paid what they did, which was as much as the Wilsons and Rogers of the league, right? there's they're simply not that good and it's kind of crippling to a team i mentioned it previously like the teams that pay the quarterback the most like those teams rarely win the championship because although they are really good it's just hard you got to pay 52 other dudes so it's hard when one dude's getting like 20 percent of the cap and it just hinders the roster around them there are a few exceptions to that as you said so um if i had to guess how much he'll get paid i'd say it's like 28 to 30 million and I'd say that's maybe even more – or that's probably more than he'll actually get paid. But the way I view it is they're 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 competing with what someone's going to pay on the open market. And when the Jets have money to just throw at him, like he's going to go for more than what he's actually worth. That's just the – that's just how free agency works. Yeah. So I'm going for so, $30 million on him. Right. And then ultimately that gets to the progressive question, right, of Grant's idea and just an outlook where – if if he's playing hardball with that, do you just use him up to five years and say, just walk and we can draft another guy? Because mm -hmm. Baker Mayfield is good, but you can draft a guy in the first round the way quarterbacks are coming out now and put him in that system and say, hey, run play action, run bootlegs with this run game. And he could put up similar pr production to Baker Mayfield. I'm not saying it's Mac Jones, but I'm saying – like if, if Joe Burrow was on, if rookie Joe Burrow, no injury was on the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, Baker Mayfield has a more powerful arm, but Joe Burrow is processing is so much faster. He's a much better mover. He's more athletic. I think he would even put up better numbers than ba what Baker Mayfield did this year. So it's not a knock against Baker Mayfield, who I think is a, actually underrated at this point. I think, I think he makes enough throws where he's a 14 to 18 guy. He's a really good player, but I think it's more a testament to 
how overpaid quarterbacks have been in this league. And if it does get to that point, it'll be interesting because if they let him walk, I think it'll totally change the landscape of the league if, if he's playing hardball. Yeah. And I think one more thing on that is this is what we're saying. I'm just going to try to dumb it down, but I would ra- like, we would rather pay someone 5 million, like a rookie contract to be 80% of the production of a Baker who's getting 28 million because you need value in your team, right? And a quarterback who's putting up 80 to 75% of the production of the dude that's getting paid five times more of him is so valuable. And that's how the NFL has been for the last few years where these teams, they'll get, they'll draft a guy and they'll perform really well in the rookie contract, like the Mahomes and the Lamars, and they'll, they'll have really good records because you're getting elite production for a fraction of the cost with a stacked roster and yep. just to, just to further say because he nailed it right because i wouldn't say like that the rookie is going to come in let's continue with baker mayfield i'm not going to say that the rookie is going to come in and be better than baker mayfield i'm saying if he's 80 percent of baker mayfield with that offense and that team you could still probably win with him and then and you maybe more money to put elsewhere too you can build right. up your secondary you build up your, right. team, your linebackers right. all those other positions but if you're getting 100% Baker Mayfield at five times the cost, it's it's simple. It's not proportionate. So that's mm-hmm. it's 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 an analytical way to look at the NFL. I think it's a money ball outlook on quarterbacks. It'll be interesting because that's to me that's the biggest kind of league changing type decision that's coming up. And I think he's worth a second contract. I think he's definitely proven that. It's just that you don't. The Browns have to. If the Browns give him the same second contract that Josh Allen and Lamar get. I mean, God bless them. And I do want to say, too, it's not that it's easy to find the guy that's 75 to 80 percent, because for every Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson, there's Darnold, there's Rosen, there's Geno Smith, EJ Manuel, Cardale Jones. There, not that he was a high pick, but he was supposed to be right. There's the guys that just you get them in the first round and they just flat out are not good. Like they have the potential and the physical attributes but they can't get that production. They're more of like 15 to 20%. And that's when your team's screwed because you got to cut ties with this dude. And now you have a roster that's going to be aging and they're expensive. So do you want to go with a more sure thing at quarterback or get a veteran? So that's where it gets kind of sticky is when you do draft a guy and they're only 25% of the production as opposed to 75%, 75 or 80%. 